Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at static extension methods in Dart. This is a feature that was added in Dart 2.6, which was released about a day ago. So if you want to follow along, make sure to update your Dart SDK to at least version 2.6. And if you create a project, make sure that in the SDK it specifies that you're using version 2.6 and higher. In Dart, every primitive type is an object. Now, up until now, if you wanted to extend a type in Dart, there are various different boilerplate ways that you would have to go about it. For instance, you could create a class like this, and this class essentially serves as a wrapper class for a string. So what we do is we pass in a string here called wrapped. When the string is inside of the myString class, we can call this method here called print self on the string. So all this method is really doing is just taking the wrapped string, converting it into uppercase, and then putting it inside of this little template. When we want to invoke this, we have to create a myString object from our myString class, and then go ahead and call print self. The problem with this is that we're creating a unnecessary class just so that we can call a method on a string. And while this works for smaller situations, because it doesn't really take up much memory just to create a small transient object, it doesn't really make sense for when you want to add a lot of methods or when you're working with a lot of different types. In Dart 2.6, we now have a keyword called extension, and we can use the extension to create static extension methods which are attached to already defined types. We're creating an extension called myString on the string type, and we're giving it the print self method. And now you can see here that rather than wrapping the string in a my string type, we can just go ahead and call print self directly on the string literal. And in fact, if we want to, we can of course delete the name of the extension and just make it an extension on string. Now this implementation is actually very similar to the class implementation that we created before. The major difference is the fact that the wrapper object, this myString object that we are creating, is transient, which means that it can only exist if we're going to call the static method on it. So when we call our new method on a string primitive, for instance, this string primitive implicitly gets wrapped in the myString type that we've defined down here. And so we don't have to explicitly wrap it like this. Now notice if I go ahead and I try to instantiate the myString object and not call our static extension method on it, we get an error, and that's because we're not allowed to instantiate this object by itself. The only reason why this object exists is to allow us to bridge these methods to our primitive type of string. And so defining extension methods with the extension keyword is much more concise and also more efficient than creating a wrapper class like we did down here. Notice in our extension block, when we're referring to the string that we want to convert to uppercase, we can use the this keyword. We print this to uppercase, so it converts the string to uppercase and then puts it inside of the template and then it calls the print function on it. So this just refers to the object that we're calling this method on. Now let's say we've got a list and we want to take the list and just sum all of the values inside of it. So we're just assuming that this list is a list of integers. We can use a fold method to do this and fold allows us to specify a initial value and then we just take the initial value and pass it through our closure and we then take each value in our list and also pass it through the closure. The first pass will take one and zero and then add them together to get one and then we'll take two and that one value and then add them together to get three and so on. So this will go through and basically just add all of the values together until we get a sum and then it will print it out. So let's say we want to generalize this operation 
to every list of integers. Maybe we have a ton of data that we're getting from an API, or maybe we've got a bunch of operations that we want to run on lists of integers specifically. We can go ahead and create an extension block for the list of integer type, and we can of course put our fold call inside of it. So we've got a getter here which will return an integer, and the getter is called sum, and this sum takes the list, calls fold on it, and it calls fold with the same parameters that we used in this list. So it essentially just takes whatever the list of integers is and then adds all the values together and then returns that sum. We can now take this fold call, remove it, and replace it with a call to sum, and this will do the exact same thing as it did before. Now notice I can also call fold on this, but I don't actually have to put the this keyword in there because the extension block knows that we're referring to the list of integers when we're calling the fold method on it. We can also of course extend this even further. So say we want to create a product, we can then call fold on our list and instead of starting at zero, we start at one because of course zero times any number is going to give us zero. So we start at one, this will be one times one, which will give us one and then one times two, which will give us two and so on. And this will give us the product of all of the values inside of any list of integers. And of course this saves us quite a bit of time because we don't have to write fold on every single one of our lists that we want to get a product or a sum for. So here we have the sum of one to five and then we have a product of this random number list. Inside of our extension block we can also define operators. So here I'm defining an operator of asterisk for list of integer types where we take a list and we take the list that we're calling the method on, we concatenate the two together, and then we get the product of the resulting list. And we can just invoke it like we would with any other operator. So you can see here that I'm just taking our two lists and calling the asterisks between them to call this method. So I don't have to use the dot syntax like I'm using with these getters. If we go into our command line and run our code, you can see that we get back 15 and then the product and then the product of both of the lists. Now let's say we want to create a plus operator on our extension that will do the same thing that we did with our product here, but instead return a sum. So this will concatenate the two lists and then return a sum. This is going to not work. And the reason this is not going to work is because the list type already has the operator of plus on it. And of course that plus operator is used for concatenation. So if your extension tries to use a method or an operator that already exists on the type, you're going to run into a problem where the extension method will never properly be invoked. And this is because the extension block doesn't inherit from the type that you're extending. And in fact, you're not really extending the type as we kind of saw before. Instead, we're sort of making this transient wrapper type that only exists to call these methods on it. And so it's really just a syntactic sugar over our sort of wrapper class. And because we're just using the wrapper class, we need to specifically specify what type we're going to call this on. And that's actually why they're called static extension methods. So because Dart is a statically typed language, the compiler needs to know whether or not the type that we're calling this on is in fact the type that we're extending. So in this case, we're extending a list of integers and the list type already has a plus on it. So it's going to invoke that plus first before it tries to use the extension block. If we say take a list of integers and assign it to a variable that has a type of dynamic, so it's not being referred to as a list of integers by the compiler, and we try to run one of our extension methods, it will not work. So here we have our list of integers and it's in a variable called list, which is dynamic. And if we try to call sum on it, the compiler will not know to associate our extension block with this type because this type is dynamic 
and because our methods are static. So as you can see here, we get an exception back and it talks about how there's no instance of product on the list of int type. So even though the compiler was able to figure out that the dynamic variable that we defined is a list of integer, it did not associate the extension block with our list of integer type. And that's because at compile time, that variable was treated as a dynamic type, not as a list of integers. All right, so now let's look at something that's a little bit more real world. So say we have a class, and maybe this is just a class that we're using to read like an API, or maybe we're using this class to say store data, and the class is say a person class, and it has a field of a name and an age, and we just pass the name and age into the person object when we instantiate it. Then we can use an extension block to create a from method and a to JSON method, which will allow us to serialize our person object to and from a map of string and object. And then of course we can use our JSON decoder to decode and encode the person to and from JSON strings. Now at first glance, this may not seem that useful because we could of course take both of these methods and put them into our person class. If you consider that you can use code generation to maybe take any data class you want and give it a from and to JSON method using an extension block, it becomes a little bit more useful. So if you think about libraries like JSON serializable, which take a existing class and then add some abstract methods to it or some functions to it to allow you to convert the data to and from JSON, you could instead use an extension block in that generated code to add the to and from JSON functions. And of course, we can invoke all of this code using our person class. So here we're creating a person called Tom at the age of 23, and we can just print out the person as JSON. And then of course, we can create a map, then put that map into a person using our from function, and then turn it into a JSON string so that we can print it out in our console in a very neat way. And as you can see here, we get back our two pieces of JSON. One of them is Tom, age 23, and then the other one is Jackie, age 10. So really at the end of the day, extension methods are really useful when you wanna take a piece of code, generalize it and alias it, and also associate it with some type that exists inside of your application. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just like this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to hit that notification bell. Have a good night.